Picture this scenario. It's an incredibly windy day at Soldier Field, and it's third down on the final play of the first quarter. You're at the 35-yard line and going with the wind for the time being. After throwing an incomplete pass, it's now fourth down. Your fourth down play is going to be the first play of the second quarter. Because it's a new quarter, you switch sides, which means you're now going against the wind. You're the head coach. Let's put you in the hot seat. What do you do in this situation? Do you A, try the 52-yard field goal going against the wind? B, pump the football and try to pin your opponent deep? C, go for it and try to get a new set of downs? Or D, simply wait for the wind to stop? Obviously, option D seems ridiculous. You can't just wait all day for the wind to stop or change directions to be in your favor. But, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, there was a time where this was perfectly legal. There was a time where this clip from the first Spongebob movie was a completely legitimate strategy. I'm stalling. Yes! Stalling? Stalling! This is the story of the old football rule that made stalling legal. First, we need a bit of context. This is the 1940s. In the stadiums, the scoreboards are not digital when it comes to timing. They are manual scoreboards that look a lot like this. There's a clock that's showing how much time is left in each quarter, and that's it. There's no countdown clock like you see in stadiums today to show how much time is left in the commercial break. There's not even a clock to let you know what the time of day is. On top of that, games aren't being televised. Television is still a pretty new and expensive technology that not many people have. In 1945, it was estimated that there were fewer than 10,000 TV sets in the entire country. Radio was still the king, and the NFL Championship wouldn't even start getting televised until 1948. What this all means is that you don't have to worry about ad breaks or games running over and spilling into other programs, a la Heidi, which you can check out in the upper right corner if you want to learn more about that. Teams, realizing this, began to try and manipulate the system. Knowing that officials weren't watching the clock too intently, at the end of each quarter, some teams would try stalling. Maybe they were doing it to gain an advantage in the win. Maybe one of their players was a bit knocked up and needed some extra time to come back into the game. Maybe they wanted some extra time to adjust their strategy, or maybe they wanted to get the other team to lose some of their momentum. Whatever the case, teams began to stall time in between periods. Whereas nowadays, it's two minutes in between each quarter, back in the early days of the NFL, that number could have been anything. So why did this rule change? As you can probably expect, the league realized that this was bad for the game, and they wanted to put a stop to this. More specifically though, in 1945, they wanted to speed up the pace of play since the game was going slower. The game was evolving, as the average number of plays went from 145.5 in 1938 to 158.5 in 1944. But with more teams starting to utilize the forward pass, and with an incomplete pass stopping the clock, the game was taking longer to complete. And with more teams scoring touchdowns, as the average number of plays it took to get a touchdown went from 48 in 1938 to 24 in 1944, that meant more changes of possession, which meant stopping the clock more. As Hugh L. Ray, the technical advisor to the Rules Committee, said, We're only trying to keep officials from destroying time that belongs to the teams, and trying to keep the teams from wasting time that belongs to the fans. In the span of a decade, Ray revised more than 150 rules to try and help the speed of the game. And this was one of them. I don't think anybody's complaining about this rule change. I think it can be universally agreed upon by NFL fans that stalling time to have the games drag out as long as possible is a bad idea. But if you want another example of just how different the sport was in the early days, look no further than this. Because back in 1945, if you told the coach to run out the clock, it took on a completely different meaning. Special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a Patreon and request future video topics in the description below.